St. Jude's. I hope you are here with us on Facebook Live, and we're glad that you are. Our service will begin here in just a few moments with our prelude, and I invite you to take a few minutes while we listen to this music to center your hearts and calm your mind as we gather for worship this morning. Good morning and welcome to St. Jude's for this Sunday, July 5th, 2020. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. Our opening hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing. You're invited to sing along with us wherever you find yourself in the world today. We will be singing verses 1 and 3.
the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Now join me in a prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now a reading from the book of Genesis. The man said to Rebekah and her household, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has flocks and herds, silver and gold, camels and donkeys. Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Be'er the High Roy and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field. And looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into her, his mother's Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read together the canticle, the Song of Songs. 
Hear the voice of my beloved over the mountains. He comes leaping, bounding over the hills like a young stag or a gazelle. See where he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, peeking through the lattice. My beloved calls to me, rise up, my love, my beauty, come away. For now the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, flowers appear on the earth, and the time of the singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard throughout our land. The fig trees bend with scented fruit, and all the squash vines blossom, sending forth their sweet perfume. Rise up, my love, my beauty, come away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father, the Son, except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Holy and revealing God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. Jesus has some perplexing words for us this morning. This is quite the curious gospel reading for our first Sunday together. We're going to have to take a few steps back in Matthew's narrative to find our way into this morning's gospel reading. Jesus has been teaching his disciples, instructing them in what he calls the kingdom of heaven, sending them out to do the work that he had been doing, proclaiming the good news, healing the sick, setting the captives free. And then Jesus continues his mission. He begins his tour of the towns and villages of the region. He continues to do that work that he was called to do. And no doubt his disciples were following along and paying attention and probably taking some notes. And in the midst of this, John the baptizer's followers track Jesus down. They've got some questions. You the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus replies, 
Go tell John what you hear and see. The blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those that were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. And then Jesus goes on to give props to John for the work that he had been doing. Jesus calls John a prophet, even more than a prophet, which is pretty high praise from Jesus. And this is the moment where our gospel this morning enters the scene. Right after Jesus gives his glowing accolades for John the baptizer and his prophetic work, Jesus goes on to lament the state of those in their generation. The people with whom John and Jesus were doing ministry didn't understand what they were up to. They were so consumed with the world that they thought they knew that John's prophetic call sounded like madness. The people of their generation saw the extravagant love of Jesus, how he ate with the outcast and welcomed the discarded and embraced the forgotten. They called him a glutton and a drunkard. The people of their day did not have eyes to see or ears to hear. They were so overwhelmed by the, the tyranny of the urgent, they couldn't hear the good news. They were so distracted by the many tasks and the busyness of ordinary life that they mistook the joy of the gospel for outlandish dinner parties with all the wrong people. They were so filled with anxiety and fear, they couldn't see the kingdom of heaven right in front of them. Let me say that again. They were so filled with anxiety and fear that they couldn't see the kingdom of heaven right in front of them. There are two things about that last sentence that I want us to pay attention to this morning. Two things that I hope that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now the first is this. Matthew's gospel continually, continually uses this phrase, the kingdom of heaven throughout. The other gospels usually call it the kingdom of God. Either way, to our 21st century ears, this comes across as archaic and, quite frankly, frankly, patriarchal. We don't live in a monarchy, and as yesterday's national holiday reminds us, our country took great pains to change that situation. So I'd like to suggest that when we hear the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, instead we understand that to mean the way of love. When Jesus came, proclaiming the kingdom was at hand, the kingdom was in their midst, he was preaching that God's way of being in the world was coming to fruition. The witness of Jesus and his work, as John the baptizer's followers discover, was that those who were blind are able to see, those who were crippled are walking, people with skin diseases are cleansed, those who were deaf here, the dead are raised, the poor have heard the good news proclaimed. In other words, Jesus was upending the status quo. He was changing the way things were. He was enacting love. Cornell West has said that justice is what love looks like in public. And that's precisely what Jesus was doing. Jesus was proclaiming and teaching and performing the way of love, and most of those in his generation 
couldn't see it. And so we can change that sentence from earlier. The folks in his generation, they were so filled with anxiety and fear that they couldn't see the way of love right in front of them. Which brings us to the second thing in that sentence that I hope we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Those in Jesus' day lived with their own anxiety and fear which was perfectly understandable, as most of his hearers would have been poor and struggling to survive under the boot of Roman occupation in their land. And we have plenty of anxiety and fear of our own right here, right now, which, again, is perfectly understandable. We are living in the midst of a pandemic, an economic recession, and a reckoning for racial justice. And yet, in the midst of his own day, and to us now, Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I give you rest. Take my yoke upon learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Weary, heavy burdens. I'm not sure about you, but I know that I can relate. These last few months have been hard. We faced a global crisis that has stretched our psychological and emotional well-being to its max, not to mention our economic and organizational reserves to their max. And this has been an apocalyptic moment in our life together. As you may well know, that word apocalypse means to unveil, to uncover. And this coronavirus has unveiled much about our world. It has laid bare the structural racism that persists and the inequities in our system. And it's also revealed the amazing ways that humans can respond in crisis and come together to care and care. Somehow, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of this challenging moment in our story together, St. Jude has called a rector. And I am honored and humbled to serve as your priest and your pastor. Last fall, when I heard the parish profile, when I read it for the very first time, I began to imagine myself serving here, and I, I could never have conceived that this that this is how we would begin our life together. With me preaching to a video camera in a mostly empty church building. With our community dispersed around the community and around the world, really. And yet, here we are. Our story together is just getting started. I have a deep sense that God has called us together for such a time as this. And while I don't know where we will be in a few months or a few years, I do know this. We are called to rest Jesus. To take his yoke upon us, to learn from him, to find rest for our weary souls. In the midst of our anxiety and fear, we are called to put on the yoke of discipleship, leaning in and learning from the way of Jesus, which is the way of love. We are called to walk this way of love together. We, we walk that way when those who are who feel left out, left behind, and 
and left over when they are welcomed into our household of faith. We walk that way of love when structural racism is confronted and we continue the good work of anti-racism. We walk the way of love together when we care and feed and shelter the most vulnerable in our midst. We walk the way of love when children are welcomed fully as participants in the body of Christ. We walk the way of love together when we enter into the silence of rest and the restoring presence of Jesus. And so, St. Jude's, as we begin our journey together, may we have eyes to see and ears to hear. May we rest in Jesus. And may we always, always walk together this way of love. Amen and amen. I'd like to invite you to join us on page seven in your order of service for our prayer for healing. In this prayer for healing, we pray for with special intentions for one another, for ourselves and for those whom we love. We are invited to lay hands upon one another in our homes, and if we're alone, we know that we are held by our community in spirit and by God. So let us pray together. O oh God, the source of all health, so fill our hearts with faith in your love that with calm expectancy we may make room for your power to possess us and gracefully accept your healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are called as people of faith to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Strengthened by the spirit that gives us words to speak and hearts to care, let us bring our hopes and needs to our loving and liberating God, who is faithful from generation to generation. God of unity, may the church work to end oppression, 
serve with compassion, share your love, and spread the gospel with boldness. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us and refresh us as we struggle to find our common ground. Open our ears to powerful and prophetic voices that revive our faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, continue to inspire and strengthen the people of St. Jude's and our rector Aaron as we begin to walk a new path together. Give us imagination, wisdom, and grace as we are called to the way of love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, guide those who govern and hold authority in the nations, that they may be led to govern with equity and justice to benefit the entire human family. May nations die to past hatred and rise to walk together in a new life of peace. We ask your living protection for all refugees, yearning for freedom and hope in a new land. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing and justice in the midst of the pandemics of COVID-19 and systemic racism, open the hearts of the people of this nation and its leaders. Give courage to all who work to end the injustices which separate us one from another, injustices of racism, poverty, inadequate health care, economic inequality, and discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Transform hopelessness, frustration, anger, and pain into a movement toward a just future where all persons are recognized and treated as sacred and created in your image, that we might be one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, give rest to the weary and protect all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love. We pray especially for those with chronic physical and mental illnesses, those suffering with the coronavirus, and all who provide them with support and care. We pray for all in any need, including Howard Pugh, Carol and Gary Wenberg, Ed Jorosko, Francis Mudi, Richard Bild, Diana and Marie, Israel Silva, Karen Leisure, Linnea St. Pierre, Diana Robb and Tammy Trujillo, Jean Riley, the Hultquist family, Jim Mangan, Jan Hill, and those we name now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, sustain those who are experiencing the pain of financial hardship. We pray for the most vulnerable communities especially immigrant families in our nation without adequate food or shelter. May they have confidence in your providence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, we commend unto your mercy all the departed. We remember Eleanor McCurdy, Bill Leisure, and those we name now. We also remember the multitude of souls who've lost their lives because of racial injustice. May they rest in peace in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. God of abundance, accept our gratitude for your goodness and blessings towards us. We give thanks for Aaron, Sarah, Chloe, Timothy, and Elizabeth Kleinfelter as they journey with the St. Jude's family. We are grateful for the many blessings we name now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray together, gracious and loving one, hear the prayers we offer today. May Christ live in our hearts and may the Spirit refresh our souls that we may be agents of your transforming power. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now wherever in the world you find yourself, may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace to you, Dan. Peace to you, Laura. Please make yourself known to us in the live feed on Facebook comments. Also indicate if you're celebrating any birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebration you would like to share in the comments as well. Good morning and welcome Reverend Aaron, Sarah, Chloe, Elizabeth, and Timothy Kleinfelter, Dan and Laura who are at our sanctuary, Jennifer, Juliet, Emma, Sheeran, peace be with you, Judy and Ken Foote, Scott, Louise, Mason, Billy, Elizabeth, Carolyn, peace be with you, Evelyn McCabe, Mike and Marcia Landis, Ann Mahler, Liza Blaney, peace be with you. Jennifer and Jeff, Jennifer Stern and Jeffrey Pugh, Barbara Simmons, Noriko, Judy Bailey, peace be with you. To the Azar family, Mary Lynn, Stephen, AJ, Evie, Gwen, and Gabe, peace be with you. Gordon Mullen, Diane Rudy, Ed and Irene Kwa, peace be with you. Jana, Anzo, and Tony Chow, peace be with you. Shani George, Susan Witherspoon, Carlos and Beth Estrada, Jennifer Stern, Mary Souza, peace be with you. Sarah and Mason Razavi, Sharon Mason, Roy Hader, peace be with you. Kelly Nicholson, Richard Leslie, Sharon Lee, and Bill Joe, peace be with you. Joy, Joey and Paul Hader, Penelope Duckworth, Karen Leisure, Peggy McNutt, Be Peggy Smith, peace be with you. Nick Hara, Connie Erickson, Charlotte Pennell, peace be with you. Nick, Jim and Betty Hara, Steve, Lauren, Nathan and Lillian Corvo, peace be with you. Anne Green, Matt Matthews, Barbara Pollock, Elizabeth, Louise Thompson, Jan and Howard Hill, Lamel Firestone, peace be with you. Aline Colstay, Kathy Lynch, Nona Kleipen, Matt and Aubrey Matthews, Kathy Yates, Peter Troop, peace be with you. Linda Morris, Lisa Carpenter, Greg Hall, 
Amanda Williams, peace be with you. Kelly, Jacqueline, SJ Phillips and family, Beth Leonard and family, peace be with you. For celebrations, we missed a few last week. So Kathy and Stephen um, Kimberlin married 50 years and eight days on July 5th. What, what? That's awesome. Woohoo! Thanksgiving for recovery from surgery last week. Roy Hader, way to go. A celebration for Mason and Sarah Rizavi, ninth wedding anniversary. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Connie Erickson is celebrating her son's birthday, Jim, 55 years. What is that? Congratulations. Let me see if there are any more updates. Wonder oh, Ren and Eric, thank you for coming. Good morning and peace be with you. Our announcements this week, please take a look on the last page of the bulletin. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff going on there. So today, please join us in the virtual coffee hour and fellowship on Zoom. Please take a look on our website for that information. Um, let's see, there's also a need for some help with our website. So if you're interested in participating, please reach out to us um, at groups at stjutes.org. And is there anybody else who'd like to share a announcement for today? It's on Zoom, we good? Excellent, thank you. Let us pray together this prayer for our blessings for celebrations. Loving creator, you are the source of life and the source of love. We thank you for all who celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and special events today. Watch over them as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. May your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. And may your love for the world shine through them the deep relationships they cherish through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So good morning, St. Jude's. I want to take this opportunity to share with you about our search committee and um, the great work that we did together. Um, we did, uh, we finally have a chance to tell you about it. We, we've been so secretive in the behind the scenes, but I'll say that we did start the beginning of our, our time together, getting to know each other. We um, built a, an amazing prayer, I think, um, that we use for every meeting um, to bring us together and to help us focus. Um, we used our parish profile to build the OTM profile and make um, the ad for position in our church. We prayed together and we had some very difficult and meaningful conversations. I'm blessed to have been, a, uh, been in this committee and, um, and, it, and I am so appreciative of the, the committee being vulnerable and full of God's Holy Spirit. They trusted me in the meeting prep and activities. Our conversations have deepened my relationship with God and this community. Thank you um, to Scott Rotondo, my co-chair, um, on the rest of the committee, Elizabeth Bowles, Carolyn um, Bacher, Judy Foote, Louise Marriott, Vance Now, Mason Rosavi, and Juliet Sharon. So most of you know that the search committee spoke to a, a number of rector candidates, first over Zoom and then later following up with in-person visits with some of them. And just by coincidence, I was part of the team along with Karen and Louise that visited Aaron at Trinity. And even more than our interview with Aaron himself, uh, I feel like I learned a lot from talking with other people at, at Trinity with whom he worked closely. 
including the rector and the senior warden and a lay leader in, in family ministry there. Uh, Aaron, all of them had very nice things to say about you in general, but what really stuck with me was the consistent picture they painted of your leadership style. Uh, they described a, a leader who could inspire volunteers to give their best efforts, build up the synergies among a group of individuals, and keep track of details and commitments without micromanaging. Now that's a, a pretty tall order, but I think that's exactly the type of leader that we've been looking for at St. Jude's. Uh, in my mind, a leader isn't someone who comes in with a grand vision for us to execute, uh, but rather someone who can guide us to work together effectively and do our best work. And so Aaron, on behalf of the entire search committee, it's my pleasure to welcome you officially to your first Sunday here at St. Jude's, the first of many more to come. And I believe the welcome committee has put together a few gifts for you, which should magically appear right about now. Well, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Karen. And uh, thank uh, you, search committee, and of course, St. Jude's. Um, and a very special thanks to Dan for manning the camera and making that seamless transition from one one side to the other. And uh, uh, this is quite a mound of something before me. So I think I'll uh, we'll pull this off. Timothy, you wanna come help me? Oh, okay. All right, whoa, oh my goodness. I'm not sure what all you can see from there. So I'll try to narrate as I go. Um, I, um, let's see, where to start? Let's see, I see a, a, an amazing, scrapbook picture book here uh, with a, a beautiful photo of the St. Jude's community and uh, oh my goodness this is amazing thank you so much this will give me plenty plenty of reading and plenty of learning to do so thank you so much for this let's see I'm going to set this to the side here and um, I, I did see the card by the way uh, I'll open it later. I see a tray of cupcakes here that says, welcome, Klein Felters. I'll try not to turn it too much and they can fall all over the place. I see a, a basket here with another card. And, whoa, what else is in here? Um, oh, it's a, a guide to Cupertino and beyond. That'll be very helpful as we Get to know oh, recipes for tea. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Okay, I see some. Oh, a mug. Oh, a St. Jude's mug. Some apricot pineapple jam. I'm sure that it is. Oh, some gardening gloves. Oh, there's another thing in here. Some pure honey. Oh, this looks like a parishioner uh, collected honey. That's amazing. Thank you. And a, a, a little gardening pail. Let's see. That's layer one. And now there's layer two. Oh, there's gifts here for uh, I see for Elizabeth. Oh my goodness. For the Klein Felcher family, for the whole family. I there's too much here for me to open all of this, so I'll just sort of peruse and uh, we'll all dig into this later. It looks like uh, Chloe and Timothy. Oh my goodness, there's so much here. Thank you so much, St. Jude's. I, I uh, and our family will uh, look forward to uh, unwrapping all of this and digging into all of it. Uh, this is amazing and overwhelming, and we are so grateful uh, for this uh, display of generosity. But even more, we are grateful to be here among you and to be uh, doing this work of ministry with you. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, I have no idea where we are in the service now. Uh, but whatever is next, we can go on to that. Where's my present? <laughs> it's coming. Okay. It's in the mail. 
All right, Scott and Karen, anything else from you? Uh, no, I think, I think we're ready to go on with the oh, offertory. Well. All right, so we're on to the offertory. And in this time of COVID and our shelter in place, uh, St. Jude's does rely on your gifts of time, talent, and treasure to keep our ministry going. And so however you are able to share in, uh, with your generosity, uh, it is welcome. You can certainly give online or by mail uh, since we are not able to gather in person for this season. And so now, as we hear the offertory music, as we prepare the altar, I invite you to again center your hearts, calm your mind as we celebrate the Eucharist, even in this different way that we are doing. Okay. of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory 
of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. Bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Jude and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, using the language or version of our choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Although we are separated each in our own homes, we are united in Christ. All are invited to join in the devotion for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. 
we present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united with you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you, and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. ancestors, God of our people, before, before whose face the human generations pass away, we thank you that in you we are kept safe forever, and that the broken fragments of our history are gathered up in the redeeming act of your dear Son. Help us to walk daily in the communion of saints, declaring your faith in the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body. Now send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen.
and now receive this blessing. The world now is too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. May your eyes be so blessed to see God in everyone. Your ears so you hear the cry of the poor. May your hands be so blessed that everything you touch is a sacrament. Your lips so you speak nothing but the truth with love. May your feet be so blessed you run to those who need you. And may your heart be so open, so set on fire, that your love, that your love changes everything. And may the blessing of the God who created you, who loves you and sustains you, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing all five verses of O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. <laughs> Speed of God.
Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. You are all invited to join us for our virtual coffee hour. It's a Zoom link, which is on our website. So just go to stjudes.org, click on the virtual coffee hour Zoom link, and we will uh, see you there.